I have Can your you consent? Can you see that uh, white line? Watermark? Yeah. yeah. That's, That's how the river was before the high dam. Wow. Now the night dropped. And now we are in between the two dams. You can see the old Aswan dam there. And the new dam is that way. And because of the two dams, small lake have been created here. I mean, this lake has no name. I call it Dam Dam Lake, isn't it? We got a good guide here. Uh, <laughs> Remember we were talking about the Dam Dam? Yeah. <laughs> Did more damage than good. <laughs> we ran out of gas. <laughs> Please. And you see that island with the green bushes? That is the original island tree line. From there, we moved all of the monuments to here. How, why, and when, this and when can you want to go there? Anyway, 16 temples have been moved from there to here. The main temple is 
file of it. Absolutely right. It looks like the uh, space. I mean, the ancient island that nearby island was considered as a gateway to South Africa. It was uh, 450 meters long, 150 meters wide. This new site had the same area, almost the same, but it is higher up, something like 12 meters more than the ancient island. Again, back to the names, I said four names for each city. The ancient Egyptian name of that island was not like this. It was Pa-U-Lak. We call it Pauk. P-A-A-L-K means the end or limits between the two lands. I mean, if you come from north up to the south, here was the end of the Egyptian border. If you come from south down to the north, here was the end of lower Nubia border. So it was in between, that's why they called it Pau. When the Greeks came, they wanted to make a friendship with the natives, with the Nubians. That's why they gave it a nice name, Philia. Philia in Greek means friendship. When the Romans came, they called it Pelak, P-E-L-A-K, same meaning. The Arabs came later. We don't have P in Arabic alphabet, we have B for boy. That's why they called it Pelak. But anyway, the same meaning. The Arabs found the ancient Egyptians planted the island with the vegetations, fruits, vegetables, and date palms. That's why they gave it a very nice name, Pearl of Egypt, Pearl of the Nile, compared to the desert around it. On the ancient island, I said, there were 16 temples, date back to the Greek or Roman period. Because of Aswan Dam, the old Aswan Dam, which was built by the British, 
between 1898 to 1902 and raised up twice more in 1912 and 1934. Since that dam was built, all of the monuments were completely covered with the water and the mud for 10 months in a year. And the water was as high as that temperature. Mm. Since the new dam was built, the Nile, I said, dropped. And most of the monuments covered with the water was as high as the columns. For this reason, we have decided to move the monuments from that island to here. The work had been done by UNESCO, started in 1972. In March 1980, we opened it officially. Through eight years, we moved everything. How? First of all, we made just a covered dam around the island, pumped the water out, numbered the stones, and dismantled them, not like Abu Simbel. Abu Simbel was one single piece of stone cut in the Nubian mountain. To move that, they were obliged to cut the temples into several pieces. Here was something else. We dismantled the stones, transferred them on big barges to here, and rebuilt them again exactly as it was before. More than 45,000 pieces, weighing more or less one to eight tons, be moved to here. When they choose this island, some of the Egyptologists said that the name of this island is Egelica. The other people said it is Aglaska. What does it mean, either Egelica or Aglaska? Honestly, I don't know. But you may ask, what is the real name? This is my original home. I know well the names of my country. I mean, the Nubian names. The first Nubian name is Jelig Nati. Jelig means wolf. Nati means island. It was wolf island. I mean, not inhabited. The second Nubian name is Aigi Jelika means remember me, don't forget me. Wolf Island, yes, not inhabited, yes, but please remember me. I think they couldn't pronounce well. Instead of saying Aigi Jelika, they said Ijelika, and the other said Aglaska. That is the difference between the two names. Again, back to the monuments, I said there are 16. The main temple is that temple, Temple of Isis, dates back to the Ptolemaic period. When I said Ptolemaic, I meant this period always BC, built by Ptolemy II, whose name is in 285 BC, finished by the father of Cleopatra VII. We had seven Cleopatras, the last one was the famous one, and dedicated to Isis and her son Horus the child. Except Isis, here we have this is the oldest monument on the island. Porch of Nectanebo dates back to the last dynasty, built by Nectanebo II and uh, dedicated to Hathor, the wife of Horus. Then we have Eastern Colonnade, Western Colonnade, that's first century AD. Then in between this temple and the Colonnade courtyard, we have small temple of Ar. His Nefer. Ar His Nefer was a local Nubian god called Ar His Nefer. The Greeks called him Arisnophis, Ptolemaic period. Then we have a small temple of M. Hotheb, the one who designed the step pyramid at Saqqara. Have you been there? Yes. After his death, he had been raised to the rank of the gods. They worshipped him. And that's why they built that small temple for him, dates back to the Ptolemaic period, built by Ptolemy V. We don't forget the Nubian god, Mandulis, the god of Kalapsha. Also, Mandulis was uh, celebrated here, had a nice temple, but nothing remains now except small limestone, big like this, still there. Then, to the right of Isis, we have Trajan's kiosk, Roman period, 2nd century AD, Temple of Hathor, Ptolemaic period. Behind Isis, we have Temple of Augustus, Roman period. In front of it, small town gateway, uh, Roman period. 
and the, to the left of Isis, we have Temple of Horan Daughters, means Horus the Great, Ptolemaic period, remains, and Hadrian's Gateway, Roman period. Then we have three nilometers. Do you know the nilometer? What is a nilometer? Nilometer is or used to be a very narrow passage. It goes down to the River Nile. They used it to measure the elevation of the Nile every year and to know how much the farmer pay for taxes. Hmm. If more water means more flood, means more silt, you can grow more crops, you have to pay more taxes. <laughs> if less means less. If it was like this, I don't mind. But we can understand what a bad trick done by the high priest when, I mean, to deceive the Egyptian farmers, when we know we have two different kinds of nilometers. We have a real one and a false one. <laughs> if the temple very close to the River Nile, like here, Elephantine Island, uh, Komombo Temple, Karnak, and Luxor, all of them are real. But suppose the temple is very far from the River Nile, like Temple of Horus at Edfo, where we go, um, that's the false one. But anyway, they built it to get the money from the farmers. <laughs> Even they deceived the kings. How? When we go to Komombo, I'm going to explain to that. Um, in the first uh, century AD, what we call Byzantine period, the beginning of the real Christianity in Egypt, and uh, we have two Roman periods, the first and second. The first started from 30 BC till uh, the end of the fifth century AD, and then from the fifth century till 640 AD, that's the second Roman period. In the first Roman period, uh, the Roman emperors just um, worshipped, adopted, and uh, uh, um, celebrated the gods and goddesses, the Egyptian gods and goddesses. Did the same custom and tradition. Even they dressed the same Egyptian dress to be a pharaoh. But from the beginning of the fifth century AD, uh, they were against that religion. That's why they defaced the figures of the temple. You can see the walls chipped out. And uh, converted this temple into a Coptic church. When we go inside, we can see Coptic crosses on the columns and the Coptic altar inside the hypostyle hall. This is just a, a general idea about the history of Philae and the splendid temples. Before we go there, I'd like to mention something more about that rocky island that's called Bija. There. Bija was a very, very sacred island. Why? You may know something about that nice drama, nice legend of Osiris, Isis, and their bad brother whose name Seth. You know that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The legend said that the body of Osiris buried here in his abaton, I mean sarcophagus. That's why Isis had to come, the head in Abydos, of course. That's why the Isis had to come here every 10 days to visit the tomb of her husband Osiris. And that's why the people had to come here to feel, I mean, once a year to visit the tomb of Osiris and uh, and to stay with us for 10 days as the pilgrims. And uh, uh, when we go to Etfo, Temple of Horus, you can see the details of that nice drama is written on the outside wall of Temple of Horus and um, the fight, the great fight between uh, Sith, the bad, and uh, Horus, the good, and who's going to win. Uh, what I want to say is, um, in the fight, Horus lost his left eye. The people loved him very much and they were behind him to protect him, support him, to encourage him. And they, they got the eye for us, mummified that eye, and used it as amulets. That's why, until now, the Greek and the Egyptians will still believe in this eye. It's called Ojat Eye, or Eye of Horus. We have the left hand stands upright, 
with the eye. If the hand with the eye like this, it means against evil eye, or like this to bring the good luck here. That's why whenever the king comes here, you have to get this eye from horse, to protect him, and to bring the good luck. Uh, excuse me, something else I'd like to mention, <clears throat> if you don't mind. Do you know the, that kind of fish? It's called the uh, Nile carp. Catfish. Carp. Oh. The carp. We don't eat. I mean, I was told it's delicious, but uh, here, the Nubians, we don't eat it. Because you eat those things. No. Why? Mm -hmm. No. Because of that legend. You know, Seth, bad one, yeah. uh -huh. cut his brother into 14 pieces. Right. And then, uh, and then uh, Isis did a good job to collect. Mm -hmm. She collected 13 of them. Mm -hmm. One part was missing. She couldn't find it. The that, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Since that time, Isis asked the Nubians not to eat this cat, this um, oh. carp. Until now, we don't eat it. If you ask any one of the Nubians, why don't you eat it? He may answer you because this fish ate our great 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 grandfather whose name Idris. They cannot pronounce Osiris. They call him Idris. And here we have to stop. Who was Idris? What kind of man was Idris? Okay. Um, I have to go back to the religious books. The three. The Holy Bible, Old Testament, and Quran. And the Quran, the Quran mentions something about this man Idris. Idris was um, um, the first prophet, and he lived for a long time in Egypt. And the people loved him very much, and the people also loved him very much. His wife also was a good wife. And uh, uh, then uh, he told the Egyptian people all about the uh, religious theories, about the resurrection day and everything, all about this information. Then the high priest of Ra lived in Heliopolis. He was very upset and he wanted to get rid of him or to kill him. That's why he, he had been raised to the rank of the gods. I mean, he never died. And, uh, and uh, this is a very short brief about uh, uh, Idris. Then we have to go back to the Old Testament. The Old Testament mentions something about the same story, the same circumstances of that man called Enoch. Enoch was, I mean, had the same circumstances which is in the Quran. So Enoch was like Idris. Then uh, the uh, Arabic translation of Enoch is Idris. If you look at the Egyptian history, Osiris also had the same story. Never died. And he was the god of the underworld. And uh, don't forget, Osiris had seven names. One of these names was Enoch. So there were three in one or one in three, but all are the same. And that's why I think this legend is, I mean, becomes true now, not legend. Okay? Can anyway. I, can I ask you one question? This uh, video. You are a Nubian. I am a Nubian. Could you give a little bit of the chrono chronology or genealogy of the Egyptian people so that people will know that you represent the real Egyptian people and not the indigenous people who are here, even though they are Egyptians? They are the children of invaders who came later. Okay. I tell you. Tell the Middle Kingdom, the Egyptian border was not here. It was exactly at some small village called Jebel El Selsela. And we can see that Jebel El Selsela on the way to Etro. Uh, it is anyway 70 kilometers north of Aswan City. And uh, then the ancient Egyptians came here, they defeated the south, they were looking for two things, for granite and for the gold. They got the granites from Aswan quarters and the gold from Nubia. Since that time they 
show you the name of this land because this land was called land of Kush and who was Kush again we can go back to the Old Testament and you know Noah. Noah Noah had three sons Sam, Ham and Japheth that's how do they pronounce it in Hebrew Japheth and if we take Sam Sam also had three sons and the first one called Mizraim, that's why, how do they pronounce it in Hebrew again? Mizraim, the second son called Kosh, the third son called Canaan. Mizraim came and lived in the northern part of the Nile Valley. That's why they called that land, land of Mizraim, which is Mesir Emiasar, which is Egypt. And the second one came here in the southern part of the Nile Valley, lived here, and that's why they called it this land, land of Kosh. And then the third son went to east, Palestine, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and so on and so And that's what they called that land, the land of uh, Canaan. Uh, so the Mizraim was the great, great, great grandfather of the Egyptians. Kosh was the great, great grandfather of the Nubians. And since that time, I would say the Egyptians and the Nubians are cousins. Anyway, when they came here, I mean the ancient Egyptians, and they defeated the south, they found the gold, and they called this land the land of Nob, or gold. By the way, we, as the Nubians, until now, we say gold. I mean, we say Nob for the gold, Nob. And Nubian is Nob. And uh, uh, then came land of uh, gold, I mean Nubia. And uh, um, uh, as I mentioned before, year after year, they became Egyptians, they worshipped the same Egyptian gods and goddesses, they believed in Osiris here, they loved him very much, and uh, uh, after, I mean, the, in the, the new generation, it uh, was Egypt, or we are Egyptian together, but mainly, we don't belong to Egypt. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, can I do a summary of all this? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then we'll carry on. First of all, we uh, continuously to run into problems where, as I said before, Europeans are involved with uh, many of the books that are written on Egypt. They're also involved in the education of the tourist guides here. Uh, with no disrespect to uh, Mr. Uh, Abdullah, uh, but this is not the gateway to Africa. Where you are now is not the gateway to Africa. You are in Africa. This is another psychopathic, racist statement by Europeans to make you think that you are somewhere other than in Africa by saying that this is a gateway to Africa, as if Africa is somewhere else further down the now. Okay? This is, the, this is a continuous problem that we run into. Even the naming of the cataracts that we saw yesterday that we talked about. You don't name no cataract against the flow of the river. That's why they came in and named the first cataract here. This is the sixth cataract in this region. The first cataract is a little north of Khartoum. You mean south? A little south. north of Khartoum. Oh. Okay, which would be I'd south better. south from here, yeah. but a little north of Khartoum would be the sixth, would be considered the, uh, first. the first cataract. And this would be the sixth cataract. This is something that we have to definitely get straight. When we also look at the first dynasty, the pharaoh named Normer, who defeated Scorpion and reunited Egypt. Where did Normer come from? Normer came up from the south. He came up from the region that would be considered Nubia. This is another thing that we have to look at. If we look at the old kingdom pharaohs in the pre-dynastic period, all of this came up from the south. This region was called the Tani Tanihasi. Egypt was called the Tamarian. They were not cousins, they were brothers. One nation, one nation of people. There's no different from the Kikuyu and the Maasai. Not two separate distinct nations. The culture is the same because, yes, Nubia was the mother. As we repeatedly said, the oldest kingdom found in Nubia was uh, Taseti, going back over 26,000 years in the area of Kostul. As I said, Bruce Williams, who did the excavations in this region from the Oil Institute, have dug up many of the artifacts to validate that, in fact, Nubia was the mother, and yes, Egypt was the daughter. 
but again we find a continuous breakdown even the breakdown is even further when we get it into the uh, theological racist concept in the origins of man meaning that the theological origin of man ham Cush, canaan and punt those are the theological uh, racist interpretations of the origin, origin of man for instance the africans in this region uh, biblically would not be considered Africans but considered Hamites. Black Caucasians as they call them. This is just an allegorical racist myth that was brought on early by the early Sanhedrin priests. You can't take and put a biblical story on the information that you see here. Those are just allegorical myths that you can't find nowhere. You can't go and show me no Cain, and you can't go and show me no Ham, but here you can come and see Osiris written, the long legacy that's on the temples here. You can't connect that with this, because these people came and stole these concepts from here. So when we, talk, when we start talking about and connecting the, uh, the allegorical stories of the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran, you cannot connect that with this. This is other people's interpretation of African people's history. Whether we deal with it anthropologically, with the Caucasoids, Mongoloids, Negroids, this is another anthropo anthropological racist interpretation of the origins of man. And we have to continuously look at that. We can't continuously find ourselves locked into a biblical interpretation trying to identify our history. Because if you do try to identify your history on that level, then you would have to justify the fact that you were cursed by God in the Ham story. As the Ham story tells us that these early Jews wrote against African people. Why? Because they were stealing everything from here, as we'll see as we proceed along with our journey. Mm -hmm. Excuse me just one second. When I said uh, Phil I was uh, considered as a gateway, I meant the ancient Jewish men, they came here. They had no idea about south of Egypt. Mr. 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 Abdallah, no, Mr. Abdallah, hold up, hold up, hold up. I can't believe that you're making that statement when on the, on the uh, first, first of all, you're the first time we've had a guy here in the 10 years that I've seen you. How could you make that statement when in the tombs of the nobles, you can go up there and see Harkouf, and you know Harkouf made many expeditions to the south, as well as Hatshepsut, as well as Sahori. I'm coming. Wait, give me a chance to... So how can you say they had no identification with the South? Yes, wait a minute. Because before the Fifth Dynasty, the people believed, as a primitive people, they believed that the source of the Nile starts from this cataract. Of course, they made a great mistake. When the local governors of Elephantine Island did their expedition to the South, they sailed up as far as Ethiopia, where is the last cataract there. Then, when they came back, they recorded all about their expeditions on the walls of their tombs here in Aswan. And they corrected that mistake. They said, the first cataract starts from there, not from here. Anyway, there are six cataracts. We call this the first if you go up the river. And it is the last if you come down from Ethiopia to here. But anyway, uh, that's why before that they called this the gateway to the south. Didn't you have to accept go to Pan? present-day Somalia? No, I mean, fifth dance that's long time before Hutchinson. Well, we'll continue, but at the same time, the same primitive people that he talks about are the people that brought morality to the world. Coming up out of pre-dynastic period of Egypt, we have accounts of this. You cannot come out, you cannot come out of so-called pre-dynastic period of Egypt and build a pyramid. That would be like saying that the white boy came out of the caves of Europe and built a space shuttle. So he's telling us that the primitive people, okay, who they were then, is if, but these are continuously European interpretations. And I can't sit here and allow the, my ears to accept these kind of terms. Now, yes, we knew about the interior of Africa continuously. Now, if we understand that our ancestors called that land Taneter, Taneter was the Holy Land. We said continuously, even far back than even what you're saying, on the papyrus of Hunefer, we came from the beginning of the Nile where God happy dwelt at the foothill of the mountain of the moon. Yeah. 
That being Kilimanjaro and Renzuri, where the snow-capped mountains stay snow-capped year-round. All the zoomorphic types that you can see on the temple all relate to the interior of Africa. With the lake of fire and the baboons called Emhetet. Why are they around that lake? Because that is the same lake that if you took the journey all the way back to the interior of Africa, you would see the same baboons all around that lake that they call Lake Victoria, which is the African name for Lake Nyanza Mwanza, that they changed to Lake Victoria. So continuously, so even if we deal with the Papyrus of Hunefer, we came from the beginning of the Nile, where God happily dwelt at the foothill of the mountain of the moon. Any other interpretation, they will try to keep you in Mesopotamia along the Tigris and Euphrates River. Now let's proceed on. We love it, we love it, we love it. <laughs> I think you're going to get an education, sir. <laughs> but you, you're my brother, I love it. <laughs> because it's necessary. What I was going to ask you was this. Um, during the, uh, when they did the excavations here, and they found out that uh, <laughs> there were nine <clears throat> kings that predated <clears throat> the pharaonic period. And those kings were in Cusco. Uh, the the uh, nine kings that uh, they dug up, the uh, uh, grave sites that predated the uh, pharaonic period. Um. Um, excuse me, uh, one day it was uh, a big large door was stood here and you can see the hand still there. So the door used to come this way to that big lock. And that's why you couldn't find any reliefs on this side because this was beyond the door. Just you can see this uh, French graffiti. In the middle of the period, some of the French soldiers of Napoleon, they came from the pyramids as far as here and they wrote this graffiti in French. But here you can see this uh, high reliefs telling us uh, that's the king holding his candlelight and uh, making the offerings to Isis. What I want to say is, it's very strange to find this here. If you look at the name of this uh, king, we can understand something very interesting. Uh, I said this temple dates back to the Ptolemaic period, was built by Ptolemy II, whose name Philadelphus in 285 BC, but if we look at the name here, it is Ka Keber Rey. Ka Keber Rey, that was Nick Tenebo II. His full name is written there, the two cartouches. And who was Ka Keber Rey? That was the, uh, the king who had built that oldest monument we've been there. So that man wanted to build this temple for Isis and didn't finish. He just built this gateway and never finished this temple. Because on the rest of the pylon, you can see the names of um, Ptolemy II and uh, the father of Cleopatra. But here on this gateway, you can see the names of that king, Nectanebo II. So it doesn't belong to the Ptolemaic people. I mean, just this gateway, okay? Here you can see the open courtyard behind the island. behind the main pylon dates back to the same period, Ptolemaic period. I mean, we have 10 columns here and we can see different capitals. Sometimes you can see that's called open papyri four or open loti four, lotus, or palmi four, like that one, dead palm. And uh, this is the Greek or Roman influence on the Egyptian design. When you go to Luxor, you can see the capitals in one form, either open papyrus or closed, but not different like here. Behind them, three small rooms have been used as storerooms. 
And that big door over there was the library for the holy books. It's very unusual to find the library outside the temple. It used to be inside. Otherwise, that's called Mamuzi. Mamuzi, it's a birth house. For the liver to give birth, symbolic and unusual. Symbolic because they said Horus was born here and unusual because this inside used to be outside. But if you look at the columns, you can see different columns. I mean, each one has two capitals instead of one. The first capital is floral capital. Okay, no problem. Sorry. But the second has the cow's ears, headed goddess Hathor, the goddess of joy, Mary, dancing, love, and music, the wife of Horus. The sacred animal of uh, Hathor was a sacred cow. Above the head is the crown of Hathor. At the same time, from above to below, the crown, the head, and the column, all together to make the musical instrument of Hathor, is called the sistrum. It goes like this, you hold them like this and shake them, like this. Either high priest or the king had to play with that sistrum inside the shrine to drive the evil spirits out of the shrine. Then they had to burn incense before the gods to bring the good spirits inside. And uh, this is what we call it Hathorian columns. When you go to Luxor, Deir Bahari, Temple of Hatshepsut, you can see the best Hathorian columns at Deir Bahari. And the, also, if you go to Dendra, the Temple of Hathor. Looking at the second pylon, it's quite similar to the first one, but smaller and shorter. I mean, this one is 45 meters wide, 18 meters high, but that one is 32 meters wide and 12 meters high, and we can see the same representations again repeated. I mean, the father of Cleopatra appears again, he is short holding his candlelight and the royal scepter before Horus the falcon and his wife Hathor behind him. On the other side, you can see the parents of Horus, I mean Osiris and Isis. And here we have to stop for a while, if you don't mind, to see that the facing. You may ask why did they face the left side, not the right? Uh, from my personal point of view, I would say we have to thank them. Why? If you look at the back side of this pylon, we cannot see anything. Both sides have been defaced. But also we cannot see something else. They never, never touch the crowns. Because that was the emblem of the country, they inspected that, and we have to thank them. They never touched the ankh, the key of life, because that was quite similar to the cross. They never touched the writings, the hieroglyphics, because they had no problem against this writing. Their problem was against the uh, religion, gods and goddesses. The man who was worshipping this god or that god, they defaced him, but there is no good and definite reason for why they defaced the left or the right. Because if you look at that, Ammon, you can see him up there with two long feathers. They defaced just the upper half of Ammon, but not the legs. Why? No reason for that. Behind him, they defaced the whole body of his wife. They never touched that wall. And they defaced the left part of the priest on that side, but not the right. There's no good reason for that. So I would say they would just want to deface and that all. Okay. Do you to go to the mammals first before you go there? Right here, you see the first concept of baptism. As we see Tahuti, known as Thot, also Hermes Trismegistus in Greece. And we see Horus baptizing. The whole concept of baptism already taking place. Another thing I want to point out here is you see in the corner there, Isis there, lactating or breastfeeding the child Horus. You see her up there in the corner? Yeah. Also chiseled out. But here we, see, we come back here and we see carved in stone. The first mother and child, going back over 4,100 years BC, predating Mary and Jesus. But as uh, he mentioned, why did they chisel out? Why did they chisel out Isis? Can we have a representation of maybe why they chiseled out Isis? No, this is why Isis was chiseled out. 
because they couldn't stand the fact that she was, in fact, the first African Madonna and child. The first goddess, 4,000, excuse me, this is a private group. This is the first concept of the mother and child known in history. Even right here, when you turn this around and see right in this temple where they plagiarize it, where it says right here, reverence for the Egyptian goddess Isis and her son Horus, shown at left or meaning your right, an Egyptian statue of the Ptolemaic period was easily converted to veneration of Mary and Jesus. Easily converted to uh, veneration to Mary and Jesus. The fourth century fresco at far left of Madonna and Child adorned in the Coptic monastery. Copy. That's why that one had to be chiseled out because this was the origin of it all right here. Take a good look at her and you see yourself. So many of us are trapped in the Eurocentric version of Christianity where we are bowing down to Michelangelo's uncle who he used to paint Jesus from black to white. And that's why you see continuously, you see again over here, Isis, again chiseled out. She's chiseled out here because it was the African goddess and they were at this point right here in this temple, they were changing it. Justinian, who came right here in this temple and shut it down. 535 AD. At this was the pivotal point where they were changing the African spiritual concepts into the European religion. Did you hear what I said? Yes. African spiritual concepts to European religion. Religion, the deification of themselves. Spirituality being in one with everything, the universe. Not only that, over here, you can see this. Many people just came through here and copied. As you see, the Ark of Amun Ra. It was the portable god house, even an OPEC festival that they took into warfare, like Thotmosis III, who took the portable god house of Amun Ra. But we find in the Old Testament where they took the portable god house of Jehovah when they went into war or battle, because it was a symbolic that God was always with them. But you can see where they came right back to Africa and copied from the 16 priests of Karihev and turned it into the 16 Levite priests. But maybe the technology have gotten us here too fast to understand what we're actually looking at here. Carved in stone, where people came in and looked at the temple and wrote books and then sold them to the world. After conquering them, they had to control their mind and their spirit. And then many of these temples were buried in sand for ages, and the world never knew where they copied it from. Now we'll go to that museum. And he said, you were going to be my, our guide today. And I asked, what did I ask? So where is Farouk? Because Farouk knows why we're here. We're not here for the same reason these people are here. Farouk has been with us for years. He knows that we are here, why we are here. Farouk knows the history. He knows it because Dr. Ben taught him. He taught him well. Okay. And I knew that I had not seen you, and I knew we may have some problems. But I feel, oh, pers wait, 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 I feel personally that you give an excellent history, an excellent interpretation. I really like the fact that how you gave the interpretation of why they chiseled out and left the crowns. But there are other interpretations. I know it, it's not your fault. But it's been brought down through this system and the educational system by way of Europeans. Yeah. Okay, who this whole thing was dug out by tourism and is controlled for the most part by Europeans. You see. I myself may say something unconsciously, but I try to be conscious as much as I can when interpreting our African ancestral history. And I may have to be corrected at the same time by someone in here. So it's nothing against you, it's just the training that we, uh, have, that we have gone through and the victimization of our Holocaust <coughs> of our story, <coughs> which is told endlessly on these temples and is not told correctly because if it was told correctly, you wouldn't have these people coming here and there would be no money for tourism. Is it finished? Can I say something? Sure. Okay. First, all of us, we are looking for one thing, for the facts. So, I, I, I love this, uh, this way, discussion. From the discussion we can make knowledge. 
it's not a problem. He said, it's a pro no, no, it's not a, no problem between me and you. No, 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 at all. Yeah. No problem. But I love the discussion. And from this discussion, we can make knowledge. And Mind bond being, and grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from this point of view, may I ask you a question? You show us this uh, nice photograph of yes. ISIS. Mm -hmm. This is it. Okay. <coughs> and you mentioned something. You said ISIS, the African girls. May I ask, how do you know she was African? Or why do you call her African girls? Okay, first of all, how do I know that she's African? I can look at her and see that she's African. Because first of the of color? All, first of all, not only the color, there's no one prototype, first of all, that defines an African facial characteristic, mm -hmm. hair, and so forth. You go throughout the Nile Valley and see various facial characteristics. But the time period, first of all, where we are. We are, first of all, in Africa. That's, that's right. one. Yeah. Okay, that's the number one. Yeah. These temples are built in Africa. During the time of the history of ISIS, there was no Europe. Yes. Okay. That's the right. history that was told here was strictly an indigenous history that came up out of the Nile Valley. It did not come from Europe. That's it right. did not come from Mesopotamia. It did not come from China. It came up out of the Nile Valley of the story of ISIS. So I see that the history and legacy of the story right here on the continent of Africa. That's right. How can we look at her being nothing but an African? Especially when the story that's told by her it's told by Africans that came up out of their ancestral history. Mm -hmm. That's right. From this point of view, I agree with you. We are in Africa, so we, all of us are African. But in Africa, there are so many countries, and we can identify them with their countries. So we call Egypt, Morocco, Libya, <coughs> and so on and so on. So in the beginning, I would say I am Nubian, then second is I am Egyptian, the third is I am African in general compared to the other countries. Now, you have France, is that right? I have France. You have, you know about England, is that right? Yeah. You know about Germany, is that right? Yeah. In Germany you have Germans. In English you have the British. In France you have the French. But they all come together on one thing, Europe. that they're Europeans. Yeah. Now why is that so difficult for us? It's not difficult. German European, Egyptian African, Sudanese African. I guess. Exactly. I born in Africa, which uh, I mean in Egypt, which is in Africa. Right? Go ahead. That's what I want to ask. Right. So, so which to go back to the to ISIS again. Back to ISIS again. <laughs> From your personal point of view, you say this is Africa, okay, we can say this is African colors, <coughs> but Egyptian origin. Egyptian origin. Yeah. Which is in Africa, yes. Right, it's in Africa. Mm -hmm. it's this is Africa, yes. Uh, yes. This is our continent. Mm -hmm. This is Africa. Where's the story, the oldest story of ISIS? How far back does it go? Oh, the pre dynastic period. Pre dynastic period. Where does the pre dynastic period take us to? Take us to. Around what, area, around what regions would you say how far back it goes? Egypt. How about Sudan, maybe Ethiopia? We had no idea about Sudan at that time. We're talking about Egypt. The pre dynastic history of Egypt, not the pre dynastic. Are you familiar with the Palermo Stone? Yeah, not the pre dynastic period of Sudan. Are you familiar Sudan. with the Palermo Stone? Palermo Stone, are you not familiar with it? No. You went to Cairo University, you know nothing about the Palermo Stone. What do you mean by Palermo Stone? Palermo Stone, Stone talks about the pre dynastic dynasty. Oh, Palermo, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that, yes. And how far back do these dynasties go? How far down the river does that go? How far? Three. Tasseti, you heard of Tasseti? Yes. Tasseti. 3200 BC. Tasseti, how far back does Tasseti go? 3200 BC. No, no, not Tasseti. Oh. That's Egypt. 26,000 years. Tassetti. 26,000 years. Oldest Nubian kingdom. Okay, but I'm talking about the pre dynastic period. That's when pre dynastic. That's pre dynastic. That's pre dynastic. What's yeah. the date that begins on ISIS in, when in, this the, appears. in the museum? In the museum, in Cairo Museum. This is just late period. Hmm? This is late period statue. 
Late period? Yeah. How late? Uh, Ptolemaic period. No, this is not the Ptolemy period. No, this is Ptolemy. No, it's not the Ptolemy period. From the future, it is Ptolemy. You know, this is not the feature of ISIS. It's not the feature of ISIS? No. Who's the features of The crown, yes. The baby, yes. But not the same feature of ISIS. Mm -hmm. Because look at ISIS here. Not like this. In the late period, you can see what Ram, If you've seen Ramses, Ramses' statue is in... Alessandro? No, in, the, in Memphis. Uh -huh. the standing in the field. Mm -hmm. Why is it different from the one that's lying out inside of the building? Why is it different from the one in Abu Simbel? If it is real Ramses, there's no difference between them. If it's the real Ramses? Yeah. Why is that Ramses standing in the field different from the other Ramses? Because that's not real Ramses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the process of education is built into the European system as extreme self-hate, where one cannot accept their true origin. You can't deal with the fact that her features look like this in this Ptolemy. Yeah. But we can be on this forever. But I agree you know, with this. But, not, like, but, like Farouk, but, cool. like, but like Farouk, you need to have some more interpretations of, uh, of ISIS. Mm -hmm. But before I, we get into this, let's go back here. Oh, yeah. We need him back. Okay, come and explain this. Would you like to talk about this? ISIS. So what's going on here? Okay, but I mean, look at your photo and look at the face of this ISIS. Deal with, deal with the story of ISIS. Okay. Because you got, as you, as you see right here in the book that you have here, you have many facial characteristics. As I said before, there's not one facial characteristic that defines. There's many uh, pictures of ISIS and all types of I facial agree. characteristics. But right. Give me the history of what's going on here. I said there, this is the man in the birth house. And uh, here you can see ISIS. He's showing him I mean, with her baby, Hippocrates, her the child. Alan is, very, is, very, is giving life to ISIS. And on both sides of us, you can see that's uh, Tahat and uh, uh, the goddess of, uh, of uh, Upper Egypt, named Bet. They are shown uh, helping here and protecting here. Now, in your training, mm -hmm. did your uh, professors at Cairo University, mm -hmm. uh, who were European trained and probably European themselves, did they tell you that this is where they copied from these plates this plate right here, the concept of Moses drawn from the bulrushes. Here we see Isis in the papyrus swamps. Isn't that what we see here with her young baby horse? Is that what we see here? What do we see here when she's inside of the, the papyrus swamps? Isn't there a story that Isis had to go to the papyrus swamps? No. Okay. You know how to read English? Why don't you read up here, down to here, out loud for all of us to hear? The religion which exists in the Egyptian text tell us how the goddess, after, the, after she had conceived Horus, returned to the... Can't see it. A lapse of the Delta, and how it became being quiet alone, there she brought him forth. In ISIS, in this, is in many other respects, tradition regards ISIS. You've gotten the European interpretation of many things, but I'll read it again uh, associated with this plate right here. The bull rush of the papyrus basket, Horus or Moses? Question mark. Is it not here that Jews found the story attributed to Moses in the Exodus? The legend which exists in the Egyptian text tell us how the goddess, after she had conceived Taurus, retired to the swamps of the Delta, and how being quite alone there, she brought him forth. In this, as many other respects, traditions regard Isis as an African woman, preferably a woman from the Sudanese origin. Sudanese but origin. Not only do we have a Sudanese origin, but we have here from the papyrus swamps, with the whole concept of Moses, even a question mark, even if he existed. 
But the whole concept of him drawn from the pack, from the bulrushes, this is where it came from. You can't go nowhere and find nothing carved in stone about Moses, ex with the exception of little paintings that white folks did. But when you come back here, you come back here and you see carved in stone, where people, again, repeatedly came and copied. The problem why many tour guides can't deal with this is because they're a victim of religion and they're a victim of European training. Just like we are in many cases, cannot get our story together because we're a victim of European training that have set our mind in motion and we have no other interpretation through the conditioning process will will forever keep us telling a lie on our own African ancestral story just to make the white folks happy to make us see that our story cannot be told because it's forever been lost and suppressed because of the training mechanism until we develop our own institutions. And that's a fact. And that's why Mr. Abdullah has a problem here. And I don't have no problems telling him he has a problem. I have no problem. <laughs> He's not going to accept this as the whole, why? Because he is trapped in religion as well as European training. No, 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 What is your source of this information? We got it from the European, you say. We got it from the European. What, what about you? The source I got it from is from right here on the temples. Yeah, so you, you explain from your personal and point did a of comparative, view. And a comparative analysis, mm -hmm. like anything else, like in a court of law, somebody stole something, somebody did something, something wrong, you do a comparative analysis, like a court of law, to see who is I telling have, the truth. I have to respect your idea. That's no problem. 30 years ago. From nobody. That's our problem. We become too docile. We become too passive. As Francis Welsing said, the problem with today that they have, the oppression has been so deep on us that we take the passive role that leads into a feminization that's turned a black man into a homosexual. Now I'm going to keep my jet, and ain't nobody going to tell you they have to take my life before they take my jet away from me. Now if somebody go against my history, I'm going to put them in check, period. We've been trained to be passive. We've been trained to be docile. Now let's go behind this wall. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. It's smooth. That's good behind this wall. I love the fire. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to explain a few things, and then you can have your sights if you want to do, but I'm going to do this one here. Thank you. Thank you. Because you can have self hate in America. And you can have it thousands of miles away. You can have it in the name of Christianity as well as in the name of Islam. Excuse me, we're going to do this plate here. But here, this plate here, this freeze here, is again another. This is a private group. This is another interpretation of the Western world's plagiarization and copy from African people, and then brought against us. Here you here have Tahuti, who the Greeks call Hermes Trismegistus. As we are told that the Greeks brought philosophy to the world. Greeks didn't bring philosophy to the world, but it's Greek interpretation of African philosophy. Tahuti, writing down the deeds here. Again, we see the whole concept of Judaism, as we see, we are told how, in the Old Testament, how God made man, is that right? From the soil of the earth, is that right? Is that right? Yes. We all agree with that. But here we see the God Kanun, making man on a potter's wheel out of clay. Isn't clay and soil the same thing? Yes, but this one predating the one in Genesis. As I talked before, the Memphite theology story. Equally as a creation story of Ptah that predates the Genesis, uh, the Genesis story going back 4,100 years BC. Now, so that's Judaism concept. So here we see what Christianity again stole. Where we see the Madonna and child known as Isis and Horus or her African name, Aset and Haru. So we see three concepts from the Western world. Christianity, where they stole from Aset and Horus. Judaism, where they stole from Kanun, making man on the potter's wheel. And Greeks, where they stole the concept of Tahuti, who they call Hermes Trismegistus. And we'll continue. No, that's not. Hmm? That's not. I'm listening. No, are we going to go on? Yes, another no, place? All go on. <coughs> now it's your turn. There's a couple places I have to go to. Thank you. 
place we don't go into the temples or the holies of holies. We respect the holies of holies, just like our ancestors did. Today, we'll go into a church and we'll respect everything about that church. We don't desecrate anything. But yet, how can we come back here and say that we believe what our ancestors did, but we don't respect what they did in their day? So what does it mean? So in order for us to grab some kind of <laughs> spirituality about why we are here and what we are doing, at least we should try to respect the sacred places of the temple as they did. And the most sacred place is the holies of the holies. It's all the way in back of the temple. You can always tell when you go up a ramp. That's the place we don't go into. I love this. <laughs> love it. Shukran. Here is the uh, Hadrian's Gateway. It dates back to the Roman period. And uh, you can see the representation of happy got the river of the river Nile and uh, he represented in this form female body and male head and uh, behind happy happy shampoo from I mean the water from two vases to the Nile Valley the portrait of Delta and above that you can see human headed bird the uh, soul of Osiris who was worshipped by Isis and her sister Nephthys behind here. I get back to here, you can see uh, this, uh, uh, these rocks, and the snake is shown protecting Happy while he's shown pouring the water of the two uh, vessels. And up there, you can see the vulture and the falcon horse up there. Uh, how do they move, uh, Osiris? There you can see the Osiris is shown inside his Sarcophagus, uh, carried by uh, the crocodile, the sacred crocodile Sobek, and uh, in front of them you can see Isis, and that was under the protection of the moon and the uh, sun, then the stars uh, between uh, them. Yes, Mr. Ashraf. Oh, okay. The ladies can go up the step. at the Medu Nature, you can see that the concept of the cross was already long known by African people, as you can see right there. Mm -hmm. Even though that's been, that is an even cross, over here in the Medu Nature, you can see more of a elongated cross, seeing that this was already an African symbol, right. representing peace. Until Constantine took, these, took this symbol from Africa, as he calls it, Segnea Vincius. Segnea Vincius. And this symbol, we shall conquer. Mm. But originally, the symbol represented peace. So again, we see both crosses, the cross that the, that the uh, Coptics took and the cross that later Constantine took. We still see it carved in Medu Nature, which is an ancient symbol. And yes, we see the symbol for life, which is the Ankh also. But our ancestors, where, could, where can we find the most purest form of life? Where? If they use that symbol for life, as we know, our ancestors knew the body. We did surgery. We knew the anatomy of the body and so forth. So they look for the most pure form of life we see. Why is she holding the loop? Why is the loop always, always gripped? Because in here is why. The womb, the baby, the child. The new life that'll come. The Immaculate Conception was simply that the coming together of Osiris and Isis, being that they are two spiritually clean people, that they would produce new life. Right here we see that 
Now look at the uterus very closely, and what do you see? Oh, oh the oh, yeah. Huh? Yes. See, we're still locked. Yes. Can't see mm -hmm. where the whole true concept came from. So where is the most pure form of life inside of the woman? And yeah, that's yeah. why you've got to have the fire like a volcano, because if you don't, yes. you won't get it. Right. Now, who would like to hold this for me as I take my pictures? <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold. Preferably a woman. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Oh yeah. Excellent. Excuse me for a minute, brother. Straighten it up. Straighten. Straighten it up. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. leaning now. Uh, One sec. No, I'll be in front of him if I do. Okay, one more. Okay. Do you have any problems with that? No, this is very good. I appreciate <laughs> it. Very good, yes. We're going this way. <laughs> Let's go back and to the temple. When we finish, he's, in the temple, he's really going to be my brother. <laughs> we are brothers. I love it. I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now it hurts, but... What did they say? We don't care. Because we live in Africa. We know Africa. We are Africans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so on you. Okay, um, brothers and sisters. Yeah, when yeah. I see that? No. no. Ah, excellent. Like Holy family. Holy like family. Holy family. <laughs> family. Okay. Uh, this is the main temple of Isis, and uh, what they call it, high hostile hall. Again, it's a Greek name. It means big hall containing massive columns supporting the roof. It's called high hostile hall. But this is the main temple of Isis, and uh, in 552 AD, this temple had been converted into a Coptic church by the Roman Emperor Justinian. But the natives, I mean the Nubians, refused to leave their own religion, the religion of Cyrus. That's why in 557 AD, uh, the emperor had given an order for all the pagan Egyptian temples to be closed. And you can see the Coptic crosses on the columns and the Coptic altar on the right side of this uh, right style. That's a great place. Excuse me, a let me get that cross right down on there. Yeah, but this is, it's on the altar too.
we have to look at to activate our African consciousness because as we move throughout America, there are symbols everywhere. All symbols have meaning. All symbols tell a story. For instance, when you look at a cross, as you saw it in America, even though you look at the symbol, the, the symbol tells you a whole story. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we look to the temples here, you'll notice that no matter, when you go into the temple, you'll see the snake going up the pole. Do you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now you can see where the caduceus, the medical association yeah. symbol came from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in all the temples you had to go into, it was a concept of rising up for the sun and bunum, which was symbolic of the immortality of the soul. Mm -hmm. And the wings, again, representing spiritual consciousness. Isn't it the same thing, as I said before, that Masons have stolen from us mm -hmm. and their own secret societies that African people already knew about? Mm -hmm. Where you see mm -hmm. rising up the, to the God consciousness, which they even say right here, Rosicrucian's Cosmo Conception. May their efforts be crowned with success and speed the day when modern science sh shall be spiritualized. Modern science yeah. shall be spiritualized. And conduct its investigations of matter from the standpoint of spirit. For then, and not until then, will we arrive at a true knowledge of the world African people were already there. They came out of caves and didn't understand nothing about spiritual nature. And that's why you have the same symbol here that you see right here on the temples. And now all this science is locked up in the secret societies. The Masons, the Eastern Stars, the Elks, and so forth. But they tell us they got 33 degrees. Still in frozen knowledge because it's 360 degrees of knowledge that makes the whole story. Figured out back here yet? It wasn't when I left. You notice that at the top it has God too. I forgot to point that out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the top represented the pineal gland. And it was Ra, the sun, that activated that pineal gland. So how do you think Ra is going to do to you and activate your sun children naturally without an overcalcified pineal gland? <laughs> This is, this is the same thing. Right. This is on all tempers, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All tempers. We're coming listen to our guide. Uh, I do want to take pictures. I'm sorry. We got you. Got you. Got you. Uh, uh, music. Yeah, and uh, it's a music done by the uh, Egyptian musician and the. Uh, American doctor, yeah. and uh, and uh, as the uh, European, I mean the Greek, mm -hmm. they said the uh, musical scale mm -hmm. is not uh, Egyptian, I mean, not African, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they said that's uh, just uh, European. Mm -hmm. The ancient Egyptian had no music like us today, and those uh, people in this good team just proved the opposite. Mm. They found the, um, they got the flute from the Egyptian museum, Cairo Museum. Which is right over there. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, asked the manager to, to play on it and uh, he found just uh, five or six flutes. And he played on the oldest one, which dates back to the um, New Kingdom. Mm -hmm. and Maybe you can let everybody know if everybody wants to hear. You want to talk about the, um, Egyptian uh, music is scale. When he played on that, he proved he proved that uh, the same musical um, scale of the ancient Egyptian is the same what we are using today. And uh, they uh, made another flute 
made of uh, uh, tires, and uh, this one gave them the same uh, music, and they used the computer for this, and they uh, proved that the, uh, the musical uh, scale is not European, but it is mainly here, basically here. For so, to show you how things are coming full circle, I'm in healthcare, and we're now using what we call music therapy. Uh, with our children, uh, the patients that we have, with our adults, uh, people that are addicted to drugs. We're now using what we call music therapy, but it's been around for thousands of years. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And we developed that as well. We can say with the babies. Um, here you can see this uh, small temple dates back to the Ptolemaic period, uh, dedicated to Hathor, the wife of uh, Horus. And uh, as you know, Hathor was uh, the goddess of uh, joy, merry, dance, music. And here you can see the musicians with their um, instruments, musical instruments. Like here is the best showing Sorry about on the that. Harp, on the ancient harp. Then mandolin is this one. Oh, electric guitar. Yeah. And uh, the same on that side. Here you can see the, oh, that's what I meant, the sistrum, the musical instrument of Hathor, the sistrum. I said, you hold them like this and shake them, like rattle, yeah, like this. And the uh, uh, drums, like this, here, the same, again, repeated on that uh, side. This here? No, this not. What is that? Just a, hmm? I was going to test that thing that they... It's, it's, it's a branch of uh, the flower and his tie. I mean, ah. like this and tied. Okay. Offering flowers. Okay. You go to this? This? This is this. It's a better one in uh, it, uh, Dendera. Dendera, yes. Now why is his tongue out? Tongue. 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 The first people who, in fact, migrated up out of Africa to inhabit this land and continued their migration around the world. Before you had any other people on the planet Earth, these were the first people, and that's why they were always acknowledged here. As, they are also, as he's also known as Best Horus. There's a concept called Shimsu Hor, or the Falls of Horus. And in in Etfu, this is one of the ancient stories of the Falls of Horus, and the people who followed Horus, as the story goes, was a king. Uh, up out of the south. So we get continuously stories of this migration up out of the interior of Africa. How can we be so naive? How can we let ourselves be so ignorantly stupid to realize that people fall and migrate along the banks of a river? How can we be so naive and stupid to let the psychopathic racist Europeans make us even think that you're not even in Africa? When we see the now coming up out of the interior and flows 4,100 miles, we can see this is where it all began. How can we let them tell us in one light that man began in Africa, but yet when it comes to relating to the civilization, it began somewhere else? How ridiculous does that sound? How, how can they let us tell us that there, yes, there's Dignesh, who they call Lucy, showing that the early representation of man came from this land. But when it comes to relating to civilization, relating to the spiritual concepts, then they will even accept spacemen like chariots of the gods before they would even consider you. Why can't they tell that? Because the story that they have in the Western world is told endlessly on these temples. And for them to acknowledge us, they would have to acknowledge that their story is a stolen story. And that's why, continuously, the racism gets so deep that it gets ridiculous. That's why we have to call it a psychopath condition. We're not dealing with a racist. We're dealing with an innate psychopathic problem. 
And, you, and once you understand your story, you understand why. That your story can't be told here. Look at the people when they see you here. Because they know that they are not the children of the sun and shouldn't even be here. And they know that everything about this story, from the zoomorphic types and everything else, came up out of the interior of Africa. Whether you're looking at the Ipis bird, whether you're looking at the baboons, no matter what you see, all these things are indigenous to Africa. None of them go to Mesopotamia. <coughs> Nothing. But it's something how, when we are conditioned, when we, when, when we are in their schools, and we come out, and the only story that we know is their story. When you see your story, the inner eye will open for you. And you can see all the interpretations that's going on here. You connect everything up in here. And hopefully we can go back to the holies of holies and, and um, deal with that. Excuse me, one question, please. Don't you think this uh, feature reminds us with the Aborigine? The Aborigine? In Australia. Well, again, that's what I was saying earlier, because the first people who came up out of the interior of Africa migrated all over the world. So if we're dealing with uh, the so-called name that the Europeans put on the brothers in Australia called Aborigines, but not Aborigines, uh, the, the, the true name slips me at the moment, but they are, whether we're dealing with Melanesian Islands, Fiji, Vanuatu, okay, Mindanao, these are all the same Africans who migrated out thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago, yeah. before Europeans were even in existence. And I was told that the Aborigines um, is the first people on the earth. Do you think so? Black people were the first people on the earth. The people who they call Aborigines in Australia are the are part of the migrations who came there. But the first people on the earth are what you're looking at, the Twa, who came out of the interior of Africa. The same people that Harkouf, from the tombs of the nobles, went to the interior of Africa to meet. On the papyrus of Hunefer, that's why it says what? We but the interior of Africa. Why did they left we, their we own home? We came from home. the beginning of the Nile, huh? Why did they left their own home and migrated to Australia? People, because like everything, Australia have migrated for many reasons. Many reasons. The volcano region in that region from the interior of Africa caused migrations for people to migrate. Food caused people to migrate. Whether it's following uh, herds of animals or so forth. All these things caused people to migrate. This did not happen overnight. It took countless thousands upon thousands of years. Let them know how they got there. It was all one landmass. I think it was all one landmass. Well, uh, that's that's that's, that's the question, you know, that's because I mean, that's we're talking about a major the, the cataclysmic event of breaking away of landmass and so forth, and and, uh, and all this. Uh, but I think that a lot of those string of islands that you see everywhere, even as you see the Earth as it is now, is possible for you know uh, Africans to migrate. How do we find the, the brothers in Fiji who are still excellent navigators who are still looking at the stars? And your day was a documentation on that. So they can go from one place to another to another, you know, from one place to another. So uh, I personally don't take the, uh, the view that it was all one landmass and then it split up and that's how we got, you know, we're talking about a major cataclysmic event. But I do, I do believe that uh, many of those string of islands, they were, they were uh, some of those islands were connected at one time, just like you see the Strait of Gibraltar and so forth. There was a little bit of land mass. It doesn't take much if, if we were all here and we were the only people on the planet Earth and we're looking over there and we can't get over there to that, to that, to that, those rocks over there. See, I mean, that's how ignorant they make us look to seem as Africans. It's, you know, as though we were on the west coast of Africa and we just looked at the water and didn't, you know, uh, dare to venture. <laughs> Well, the, the, the question which is uh, confusing me, why don't we help those people? Excuse me? Why don't we help those people, I mean the Aboriginal or whatever? Well, I wherever. think this is what this is all about. We need to help each other yes. because yeah. we are all in a bad situation. That's we're in a bad, you're a bad situation here in Nubia as well as we're in a bad situation. Africa's in a bad situation in diaspora all over. So if Europe can uh, have the NATO alliance, and we can have the African alliance. They can have the North American alliance to bring them together as Europe and so forth. And, and now you have the, uh, what, they, what Bush is calling what? The, uh, the New World Order. The New World Order, is, which is really to order us out. 
uh, we should have a, uh, a order to, to order African people to come together in unity. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to cause help. Okay, that's but, what's going to have. That's what's going to cause us to take in, to to deal with the control of the history in this area. We are not so serious in this. No. Well, you said the sand is if as if tongue is in, he would be sad. But he's called his symbol. His symbol represents happy. See, so if the now is called happy and he was called happy, the tongue out means happy. Which happy also denotes what? Being happy, which also means happy. See, the now, the ancient name for the now is happy. That's the name oh, I know, the now. I know, happy. I know, but I'm. Where? Where? Can we go to the same people you see? Where are you going? Is he there? The guy? Right there. Oh, I thought he was falling. There he is, right there. He's going this way. All right, guys, we'll be back. We're already back there. Okay. It was a very dark room, and the common people were not allowed to go here unless the high priest and the king. Hello. He's on the walls, telling us all about the death of Cyrus, his mummification, his burial, and then his resurrection again. As you know, it is a kind of mythology, and here you can see how they describe the resurrection of Cyrus. You can see Osiris is shown coming from the underworld in his mummified form and holding his vast side of stability and uh, protected by his faithful wife Isis and she got the two wings of the sacred vulture to protect her husband Osiris from his bad brother Seth. That's what we are going to see when we go inside there. Yes, we can go. Okay. You going to talk about it or not? You want to talk about Thank you. 
Oh, oh. You got his money yet. Hurry up. Huh. Hurry up. I'm at the train. Hurry up. Holding this boat up here.
the, here you can see the cataracts, what they call it first cataracts, because uh, it is the first one if you go up the river, the last one in Ethiopia, and uh, if you come down from Ethiopia to here, uh, cataract is a Greek name, means waterfall, rapids. When I said cataract, I meant uh, lots of rose granite rocks in the river Nile. It looks like um, cataracts or waterfall when they open the gates of this dam. The water comes from above to below on the rocks, exactly like waterfall. And you may ask how the ships would cross this dam. We have three locks for the ships and we can see them down there. On the left side, that big, huge wall across the river is a high dam. To the right, you can see the new power station. It is in operation since two years ago. There are books in America. Are you a savage? Well, if you don't accept the term them calling you savage, why should you accept the term of Middle East? We paid to know where the airplane took us to. Where? No, we paid too much money to come here for somebody to tell us that we are somewhere where we know we're not. This is your opinion. That's right. The same confusion that they have you in. We might as well be in China, if that's the case. We're in China, y'all. We're going to see the Great Wall. It's right up here. <laughs> I told you, you're in China. And the Great Wall is right up here. This ain't Mendoza. China, China. And I told you, don't you think anything different. Far East. That's China. No, this is China right here. And I don't want you to think anything different than that. And that's the Great Wall. You see it up there? Yeah. <laughs> don't you think anything different? Why not? Because we're in China. You are not work on your mind because people would have rejected him. But um, he made a point about all of us working together all over the world. Yeah. We, we, we. But, but it, yeah, I disagree with them from the standpoint of saying, no, that's not true. And enough of us start saying it, then that's going to be all the truth. It's like a filter in the world of the rest of China. Uh, the and just because you see it in that kind of contraption, right. you think. Exactly. So. You think that that's what's happening. And it's not. And see, now we go to India and you see those people smoking. Like, they know they are smoking. Some of them do, but not all of them. Not everyone you see is smoking cash. No, we're not here. I understand what you're saying, but most times, white people keep the one there. Yeah, they're more flexible. Every time I see a black person, then.
Are you gonna be talking? He's supposed to be coming. He's no, no, no. He ain't coming. He's, he's not coming. He said he, ain't he, coming. Coming. he, he said you got it. You got it. It seems like if he's afraid to speak out to in front of these um, white people. This is again a, one of the few temples that we have intact. This temple also would have been flooded out by the Nile, but they reconstructed this site also, the Temple of Mendelusi, that many Europeans, again, don't talk about him. Why don't they talk about him? Because to say he's the older brother of Osiris, when we get the history of Osiris, Osiris himself, as our ancestors called him, Asaru, he himself was ancient. He himself came up out of pre-dynastic period. The oldest stories that we have of Osiris is that he came from the south. He came from Ethiopia. And when he came into... And again, we see Mendelusi here and Isis. The identification of Isis, how you can always tell, is with the chair on top of her head, with the sun. Okay. Without the chair, it's Hathor, or Hetheru, the house of whores. Now, even though we've talked about Champollion, who took the Ros uh, Rosetta Stone up out of uh, Africa, mm -hmm. but yet we find that this has not been interpreted yet. Excuse me, I'm on the wrong side. This has not been interpreted yet. Hmm. What is this? What is this writing? It's Ancient writing, the Mesoretic script, mm -hmm. that no one has interpreted yet. And where does it go back to? Again, back into the interior of Africa. So yes, they have deciphered the, uh, the uh, somewhat of the uh, Medu Netcher, what they call it a hieroglyphic, the heretic writing, through the Demotic, a Greek form. But yet, this here is still unknown to us. How far back does it go? How far back does the writing system go in Africa? We can go all the way back to Mona Mentapa and see again that there's Medu Netcher writing using picture scripts on bowls and plates and artifacts that were found. So the fear is, is that your story is so ancient, it's so far back into antiquity, so far back to the dawn of time, that continuously when something is dug up, you have to be erased. When you understand your story, and you understand your and when that fire, there's nothing wrong with fire, because fire is blazing, it opens you up. It opens you up and you're able to see. And we have to understand, in order for us to interpret this, we can't accept nothing less. We can't accept somebody coming and telling us that we're in the Middle East. When you have paid to come to Africa, it's an insult to your intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. That's what, it's an outright insult to your, to your intelligence. I don't care who he is. Now, if the man doesn't know where he's at, I know where I'm at. We know where we are. And that's what we come back here to see. And that's why I have to get into the spirit that I have to get into. Because it, to me, it's an assault on my intelligence. It's an assault to me. And he's keeps, he keeps telling me what somebody else told him. That's why I said, what do you think? But he himself would not let his own mind say what he thinks. Let's me know how much he's controlled. But you know, he listened. You'd be surprised. Later on, he is going to start to question. He can't do it now because, like, you put him on the spot. But and you know, it's planted in his head what you said. Mm -hmm. but, but he's he never, conscious of everything. He will never forget it. But he will also help me. He knows because what's... when I come back here next year, I forgot packages on my table. But when I come back here next year, I will have some serious documentation. This is a little lightweight stuff I'm carrying around with me now to bring some stuff for them too. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes okay. So I see that. So he has helped me. So I equally have been helped in this whole process. I see right now what I have to bring. Yes. They can come down and walk, take everything from us, and take it back to their, to their neighborhood. And when we walk there, 
said, sure, she got shot. The police arrest us for something happened. The guy can believe it. I told him, I said, yeah. I told him, people come in. They don't want to be travel. They don't want to believe that they're so nice. They're so welcome. They're so fun to talk to all these people. That's when they left there. Back in the States, or in England, all these places, Canada, you can't go close to their home. That's right. But the guy was surprised. He couldn't believe these things happen. Really? They happen right in front of you. They happen with the defacement of many of these temples that you see. You see some of the things intact. You see part of a hand here, part of something else here. technicians to do this. But even so, if my picture didn't look like his, have, did he forget the Temple of Mendelusi? Did he forget that here at the Temple of Mendelusi, what's wrong with the ISIS here? If, if mine didn't look like his, why couldn't he say, oh, but maybe the one at Mendelusi's temple, it looks like her? Huh? Right. And even though I told him there's no one, yes, it's true, there's no one prototype that defines an African facial characteristic, African hair, I've traveled throughout the African continent. There is no, you see brothers who are blacker than 150 million midnights. <laughs> who got straight hair. <laughs> and real fine features. It makes the darkest one of us look like light skin next to him. Okay? And even though we got caramel brown and teasing tan, still these are the colors of African people. But that was an African goddess that I took in the Cairo Museum that the whole story of her, the indigenous story, goes back to here. But yet, I was told that that's not, that's not African. See, you were getting set up for something. And I knew you were getting set up for something because I knew when he said, this is the gateway to Africa. I knew we were ready for war. <laughs> I don't know if you knew, but I knew. We're going to have an interesting afternoon. <laughs> and that's why the gateway to Africa, that ISIS was not African. Because the beginning of his conversation validated his point. So when we got into it, I knew that he knew it was an African because he said this was the gateway. And that he was equally going to tell you that Africans had no con, he didn't call the brothers here Africans, the Egyptians had no contact, as he called them Egyptians had no contact with inner Africa. But he didn't know that we knew right. about the tombs of the nobles. Right. He didn't know that we knew about Harku. He didn't know that we knew about Hatshepsut making her journey into the interior of Africa. He didn't know that we knew about Sahori. So he was shocked with a body of knowledge at that. He didn't know that we knew even about the papyrus of Hunefer we came from the beginning of the Nile where God happily mm -hmm. dwelt at the foothill of the mountain of the moon. So his mind was scattered, trying to reconstruct, grabbing for something. Which way will I come now? I knew what was happening in his head. And from that point, it's like a computer. The brain is a computer. It was a European computer in his brain. It was pulling for European sources, computing, because that's all that was computed in, was European sources. And he was, his European mind was grabbing to pull in the European force. I knew, even though I was looking at a black man, I knew that his brain computer was coming at me. It's already programmed. Mine is set. 
And if this is the war that's going to be, and they say before two battles, two tanks stop, start on the opposite side for warfare, it doesn't start there. The psychological war starts first, right here. And if you don't have the psychological warfare together, if you lost at that point, what's the use for a battlefield? Save your energy, you have lost. Ancient Ethiopia, there's still a lot there. We talked about Tinselli and Jer. There's still a lot there when one guy tried to tell us about the horses and we had to deal with him. We came uh -huh. with the hike suits. Step by step, we've been knocking down blocks and we're moving forward. He had to submit too, to African knowledge. And the chariot. And the chariot. <laughs> the Caduceus, the medical association symbol, we're gonna continuously see this throughout the temple because we go. But as many as the Europeans came in here, the Coptics and so forth, the Justinian and others came in, they were destroying. What were they destroying? The African spirituality. So the symbol of the Medunetra of the cross takes on the form of the European interpretation. So they brand this now mm -hmm. on the temple for the European control. So not only do you see the elongated cross, but you equally see the Coptic cross, even though both of them, as you saw in the Medu Netra writing, were originally African symbols. The cross, a symbol for peace, as well as we see the one that the Coptics use too. But the Europeans have control. It's another interpretation now. Segnia Vincius, in this symbol we shall, we shall conquer. That's Constantine, but we're not taught to read the history of the Europeans' Christianity coming at us. Only that this is the word of God and that God sent it express mail by our slave masters. But see, we can't think like that because you'll be struck down by lightning. Fear, trapped again. Trapped by fear. As the Honorable Marcus Garvey said, only fit for a child. Our ancestor said, fear is the worst sin on the planet Earth. So again, you continuously see that Coptics coming in, taking over the temple. But the story, even though it's been, we see Isis at the top again, the Holy Child again, the Madonna figure. But we'll take our pictures. But even though we see it carved in stone, is the enslavement that indeed that when we go back home that we say, Mama, Baba, cousin, uncle, friends, relatives. I saw this carved in stone that predated Mary and Jesus, right in Africa. But I saw also it was chiseled out by, by Justinian and others because now they're taking over our African religion and calling it European, calling it Mary and Jesus. I read the plate that you saw from the Ptolemy period. Did everyone see that? No. They said it was easily converted to veneration, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. easily. This is Europeans and this is European writing I'm, I'm reading from. Easy converted to Mary and Jesus. Why was it easily converted? What made it easy to convert it? That's where it came from. That's right there. They copied it. Easily converted. But the story is right below. The story is here as it's told over and over and over again. But here we see what's interesting that Mendelusi now it takes the form of the Ba, the Ba, the soul. This is one of the first forms that we have of Osiris' brother taking the form of the soul. As we see Mendelusi right here in the form of the human soul. Isn't it the same kind of soul concept that we get in uh, European religion? Yes, there's a dove ascending. There's a dove, a bird. A bird or even an angel that you saw on those stained glass windows that you never saw yourself ascending or descending, ascending to heaven or going to hell. No, there weren't any black people as the angels, but you had little white angels all over the stained glass windows. <laughs> now, I know I got to relate the ancient history with the contemporary stuff that we are victimized by. I can't separate them. Or what this will be is a bunch of mysticism, and we will try to hide our own history. So I have to connect the past and the present in order for us to go into the future. So that's why I continuously connect you to what we came out of, what we know, our present, and also our past, to know that this was all here.
Again, you see continuously everything was chiseled out. Did Africans chisel it out? No. Who chiseled it out? Mm-hmm. Europeans mm-hmm. chiseled it out. Because it's changing from our story to his story. A big difference. So was there a hell? Was there a hell? In the African concept on the judgment scene, the heart was judged with that of the feather of my eye. 